reversed. No, it's fine. Hello, we are back again with the third session on the second day of Wacom Manga and Anime Days 2021. Thank you for joining us again. Uh, my name is Jeroen and I'm happy to guide you through the introduction. Um, and I'm getting more and more practice in doing this, so this should be a smooth ride. Um, this event is brought to you in collaboration with our partners Pixif and Clip Studio Paint. And this session with Zelda is all about creating manga art in a traditional style with Clip Studio Paint. But before we jump into the talk, let me share some of the basic housekeeping rules with you. Our session will last approximately one hour with a dedicated Q&A session at the end. We will be keeping an eye on the chat, so feel free to send your questions anytime you wish. With so many people in the room, we probably won't be able to answer all the questions, but we will do our best. We are all here to learn from each other. So please be kind to each other on the chat and do not spam it. We see you socializing and sharing your art accounts on the chat and we're all for it. That's why we keep the YouTube live stream running for the entire day. And this will give you heaps of time to connect and socialize with each other. But during the session, we kindly ask you to keep the chat clean for session related questions and commentary. The talk is being recorded and will be shared on YouTube channel in the next couple of days. Let me continue with a brief introduction of who we are. Wacom has been around for some, for almost 40 years and we are the pioneers of digital pen input technology. Whenever you want to create on your computer and you realize that using a mouse or a trackpad just doesn't cut it, you should try using a digital pen. But we would not be here without our partners, Pixiv and Clip Studio Paint. Those of you who have been following our online sessions in the last months, you probably noticed our growing partnership with them. Pixiv is a social network platform for artists that focuses on communication through their artworks. It was launched in September 2007 and specializes in art publication and communication based on the concept of make creativity more enjoyable. They have now over 50 million users and going strong. You can visit and join the amazing community of Pixiv at pixiv.net forward slash en. Now let us bring on Joanna to do the introduction on behalf of Clip Studio Paint. Thank you very much. So for those of you who don't know about Clip Studio Paint yet, let me give you a quick introduction. Uh, Clip Studio Paint is versatile graphic software best suited for drawing and painting to create a wide range of content. <clears throat> With a wealth of unique features, it helps to create anything from illustrations over manga to concept art and animation. With a professional or hobbyist, Clip Studio Paint's natural drawing feel, along with its comic and manga features, is loved by artists from around the world. All right. One more thing before we start, and you know what this is all about because you've heard it before. Um, if you're based in the EU or UK, we have a really good offer for you. So please visit the Wacom eStore and use the discount code MANGA20 for a discount of up to 20% on a wide range of Wacom products, including Wacom One and Cintiq displays, as well as Intuos and Intuos Pro pen tablets. For those of you who are outside of Europe, please check your local Wacom eStore or dealers for ongoing promotions. Alrighty, time to start and to dive into the session. Your host uh, today will be Joanna and with her is Zelda. Zelda is a freelance illustrator and webcomic artist and a content creator on Patreon, creator of Myth and official mascots for Anime Expo I and Xeno. She loves to create characters and bring them to life by telling their stories through comic pages. She works mostly in digital, but also enjoys traditional media. She shares her creative processes by streaming on Twitch and she will, yes, and that's exactly, <laughs> final stretch <laughs> and my brain is blanking again. It seems to be, it seems to be the thing today. I'm awfully sorry. Joanna and Zelda, take it away and save the session. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Zelda, do you... Zelda... Okay. <laughs> Zelda, do you, wanna, do you want to add a little bit more to your introduction? Or no, was I'm that fine. all good? <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Please go ahead and I'll keep an eye on the questions for you. And... Just do your thing. 
We're all okay. waiting for the magic to happen. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Zelta, and I'm happy to be here today to share with you my uh, art process, how I work using Clip Studio Paint, and my Wacom Cintiq 16. Okay, and here's some examples of, the, of my work that's in, in the watercolor style. Uh, you can see on the, the left side, this one on the left is a simple sketch with a light wash of watercolor. And then using the same method, you can keep on building the color and eventually getting a more finished look, a more finished painting. But today we're going to do something similar to this one because we only have less than an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the features and the tools that I'll be using to, uh, in Clip Studio Paint will be rather basic. So I'm hoping it can be easy enough to follow even for Clip Studio beginners or uh, traditional artists who's interested in trying out digital art. Hopefully this can be helpful. Uh, I think I'll just get started. So if I want to start a new drawing, I'll just go over here, pick a size that I like, usually B4 and 350 dpi. And I usually like to use a tone paper. So I'll go over here and double click on the paper layer. You can change the color this way. Maybe something like usually something like this. Because using a tone paper, it's more convenient and easier to just add shading and highlight instead of when instead of just using white paper, you have to work a lot more. So if I was making say like an art print or a poster, I would actually use this whole page. I don't like that. <laughs> but uh, right now, I'm just sketching because I like to sketch a lot uh, these days because I've got this problem of like too many things I want to draw at the same time, but then I don't have enough time to render them all, right? So I usually just use a canvas, like a page of my sketchbook. So I would, I would kind of sketch little things here and there. So eventually this whole page will look like a bunch of little sketches here and there. Yeah, this is like a masterpiece right now. Yeah, so something like that. So today I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit and use the portion of this canvas. I'm gonna keep it kind of loose. I think I'll do like a profile of a girl. And I'm sketching. I will kind of also think about the composition while I sketch. Imagine how I'm going to shade it later on. And I will recommend you try to memorize or get used to using shortcut keys. It can really help you with the workflow. Like right now I'm using the shortcut keys on my keyboard. It can make your process much faster. Some of the shortcut keys I use a lot are like a P for pencil or pen and a B for the brushes or like the brackets for changing brush size. Oh wait, I'm using the pen. Yeah. <laughs> changing the brush size. So you can, you can shade it and draw at the same time, just using the same tool, make it larger to shape, make it smaller to draw a line. So make use of the shortcut keys, really helpful. Also space bar for hand tool to navigate, and R for the rotate. So yeah, there are a lot of helpful shortcut keys. And then back to sketching. Um, yeah, so I tend to like sketch a lot. I think sketching can help you improve as well because you can spend weeks to render one artwork, but the, the same amount of time, you can probably sketch hundreds of sketches, which can help you improve. 
So um, I think getting the habit of sketching often can definitely help you. I do, I, I like to do it this way, reasonably like a simple wash of color over my sketches because I have a lot of stuff that I want to draw on the side of my actual work. It's like the struggle of artists, like your work is drawing and then your hobby is also drawing. <laughs> so, so yeah, like um, when I'm not working, I am also sketching, but then I can't spend too much time on it. So I'll just do a quick sketch and add some color. This way you can at least have all your ideas down on the canvas. Zelda, do you go back to sketches and uh, that you completely forgot about and then think like, I want to do this again? Yeah, that's like, yeah, that's actually the idea because you can always go back to your color sketch and then render them if you like, oh, I like this one. So you can like go back and keep on adding the color, adding more detail and then render them and they'll be like a finished piece. Mm -hmm. Do you have like a folder that has a lot of unfinished sketches somewhere? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to call you out there. <laughs> like uh, hundreds of work in progress. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like a secret treasure treasure chest of unreleased Zelda sketches. <laughs> <laughs> treasure chest. Oh, more like dark history. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So a simple sketch, keeping it loose. Not spending too much time on any detail. If right now we're just doing a, a monochromatic sketch. You can just add shading with a pencil like this. And then I highlight with like a white color. But right now we're gonna add some color, so I'm not gonna do it that way. <laughs> okay, I think I have enough to color. Oh wait, I need to add some decoration in her hair. You just did the sketch in like five minutes and everyone's mm. really jealous. Yeah. <laughs> really jealous. This is why actually I think sketching often can help you improve even with your speed because you get used to it, kind of mm. like the muscle memory thing. So definitely draw off as often as possible. And you can sketch from things that you see or study artwork that you like, or just sketch from stuff in your head, like sketch the stuff in your head, your imagination. Yeah. It's totally fine. How do you use uh, references in your work? Uh, I use references when it's something that I don't know how to draw, because using reference can really help you a lot. It's not cheating is not is not like shortcut anything like that you sh people should definitely get used to using references because you use references and then you after you use it often enough you'll get used to it then you don't need to reference because you learn how to do it by heart so i would sometimes say like when i draw my comic i need references for like certain specific furniture or how the roof works like the the, the buildings so i need to look up like like the ancient building, you know, how they build those very, very complicated roof. <laughs> so mm. stuff like that. Like, or sometimes maybe a certain position of the, the of your like feet or hand. You can kind of look at your own hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's reference too. So. Okay, now I'll just, when I'm ready to color, I like to use a new layer for all my colors. So one layer for the sketch, one layer for all the colors. Um, I don't usually name them, but I'll name them here just so you can see <laughs> colors. And I will move my sketch layer on top of the color layer. And I like to change it to linear burn blending mode. That's just how, because I like the way it looks, but you can, play around with different blending mode and pick the one you like the most. I know some people like to use multiply and some people just keep it normal, but I like linear burn. And I hit this, this button, lock transparent pixel. After you lock it, you can change the color of the line. 
by just using gradient tool, or you can change it by using your airbrush, like drawing over the line like this. So I like to change it to like a warm color, a lighter color. And then I'll go to the color layer. And I will use a, you can either use a soft airbrush. It's default tool, by the way, like a soft airbrush. Just kind of lightly go over. Actually, wait, you need to go over the whole thing, kind of like a base color. You can do it this way, just like painting over, or I like to use the lasso tool to select where I want the color, just roughly. It doesn't have to be like super precise. And then fill the first layer of base color, usually like a cool, very pale, cool color. And then use the soft airbrush again to lightly a different color for the skin tone. And then right now I'm imagining maybe like a nighttime sky behind her and then maybe some fireworks because like summer theme. But I'm gonna keep the skin tone kind of dark. And then da, 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 use I like to use lasso tool a lot, like selecting the area you want to color. This is kind of like the masking technique in traditional watercolor. Like you mask the area you want to color or you don't want to color. Because you can select with your lasso tool the area you want to color. You can also select and then deselect the area you don't want to color. So that will be like similar to applying masking fluid. I think <laughs> and this part, I'm just going to add some hair here. So kind of using a lasso tool like a pen, drawing some shapes. Maybe something like that. And then I fill it. This time using a realistic watercolor, the rough wash. I think it's also a default tool from Clip Studio Paint. I'm gonna select a medium to dark. And just kind of fill the hair. Do you have any tips on on how to how to make sketching more of a habit, especially if you're oh. really busy? Mm. This is why, like, I remember teachers and professors, our professors, always say, "Keep a sketchbook. <laughs> like, keep, <laughs> keep a sketchbook with you all the time." You know, like those small ones, or you can just stuff it into your purse or bag, like small ones. Mm. I I used to carry one like that around with me all the time as well but now I don't go out as much so <laughs> I just sketch, <laughs> I just sketch to my clip studio so if, you can even sketch on your phone like if you have those any drawing app on your phone mm. but definitely it's keep a small pocket size sketchbook with you it should yeah. be good enough yeah and then just draw whatever you see I kind of mentioned this during my live stream ones. Like you can keep it with you in case if you ever see something like, oh, I want to draw that. Like maybe you see someone with a really nice fashion or you see some really nice looking jewelry design in the store. You'll be like inspired there. I want to kind of sketch that design out kind of because you never know you mm -hmm. can be inspired anywhere. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to use this Pure Water G brush. This one is not a default tool, but I think you can still find it just by searching Pure Watercolor G brush. It's made by uh, Red Juice, a really, really, really great illustrator from Japan. So I like to use this a lot. It's kind of my go-to tool because it has this really nice texture. 
And also the pencil that I used it was also made by Red Juice. It's from the same brush pack. But you don't have to use the same tools that I'm using. You can use whatever tool that, that you like, that you're used to. And this is like the fun part of digital art. And with Clip Studio Paint, there's so many great brushes, <laughs> so many nice tools you can just play around with, test them all. But yeah, and I'm just selecting the area of shadow and then I just keep on laying, adding the color, laying down more colors as I go. There. And sometimes the edges might be really rough, but it's okay because it's only a sketch. Don't worry about it. And try to get in a habit of not zooming in when you're sketching. Because when, uh, when you once you zoom in, you'll be carried away by details. So just keep it zoomed out like this so you can see the whole picture. And lay down all the colors. So I'm just gonna quickly fill the yukata. I think I'll use a warmer color. Because I'm thinking later on the background is probably going to be like a dark sky color. So to make a good contrast, use a pinkish, peachish <laughs> color. Do you just imagine the colors when you're working on the piece or do you have like a idea in your head before? Is, uh, if I'm lucky, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm lucky, I have an idea in my head, yes, yes. <laughs> um, I mean, like, you know, your colors, and now you decided for a pink, but why not yellow, for example? You know, it's like a warm yellow or something. And what if you change your mind later? Yeah, we can always change color later. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, after, once I color in the sky, I'd be like, I don't like that, and then I'll just change the color. <laughs> I can actually show that. Later. Yeah, you still have so much time and you're almost done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, I was thinking I can also show you how, like, my other working method, not just this one. Because this is the, the, this, with this style, I only use one layer. But you can also draw with a bunch, make use of the layers. Like use a bunch of layers. Both are fine. Oh wait, I'm using the wrong tool. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna go back and make the the face a little bit brighter over here. And then the lips. Actually I'm gonna deselect that. So add a little bit of color to the lip using the soft airbrush and then using the pencil to fill in eyebrow. You can use the pencil to kind of touch up the edges because with the lasso tool, the edges can be kind of sharp and it might look kind of unnatural in some area like because if you want that uh, traditional watercolor style, it could be kind of unnatural if you have like cell shading style. So you can use the pencil tool. I like this pencil tool because it has this rough texture. Can you see that rough texture? So I like to use this pencil tool to kind of touch up the edges. And then use the lasso tools to select the eye and fill. So select and fill, select and fill. You just keep on repeating the process. And over here, select the highlighted part of the eye. Use a, so I switch around with watercolor tool and my soft airbrush tool. This is why I recommend, highly recommend you can use to the shortcut keys. You can make your workflow much, much faster. And then do a little darker shading in the top and switch to a pen tool for like those crisp and sharp highlight that you want. Because pen tool is just really nice and crisp and sharp. 
this is like the time you need it for those little highlights. And then I'm gonna do the decoration with the hair. It probably now it's a good time to use a brighter color. So it's a good contrast for dark hair. Do you keep color theory in mind when you're when you're drawing? Uh, usually I just do whatever I look good, and if it doesn't look good, just try a different color. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I just put it down, and I don't like that change. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and then use the lasso tool to do some petals, like draw the shape of petals. This is kind of like stencil art. And then something here. So that's the convenient part about digital art. You can just experiment with things and it doesn't get messy. <laughs> you can just like try a bunch of color and be like, that look good, I'll keep that. <laughs> or like, I don't like that, let's scrap it. The holy control Z, you know? <laughs> and then to say like over here right now, you can see like a sketch line is like showing. So you can always, if you like your sketch, you don't, you want to keep it. You can just use a use a mask over here, so you can erase it, but not really erase it because your sketch is still there. Like just in case you have like a more finished sketch. Right now, this one I don't really care. It's okay. <laughs> I can erase it. Actually, erase it. But for something like this, maybe I want to have, I want to keep the sketch kind of just to keep it. So I would use the mask layer to lighten some parts that's kind of showing through. I don't want, I don't want it to show through the color. So kind of lightly mask it with your masking tool. Or you can change color of the line. Because remember the transparency is locked still. So you can go back with your airbrush and kind of change the color to make it match. You can match the color around it. Like that. So I'm using like a pinkish color. And say like over here, the hair is like a bluish gray. I'll go in with a bluish gray. So it matches the color around it. And then we just keep on going and do some decoration. And then I think we need to do her eyelashes. Same with the lasso tool. And then fill. I think this part needs to be a little darker, so I'm gonna select the shape of the shadow. And then, same thing, fill the shadow. So something like that. And then imagine if there's firework in the sky, I need some highlights, so I'll just outline like the edge. Select the edge. But actually, you can do this after you fill the sky color. Two. So, <laughs> so yeah, a little highlight on the top. Ooh. And then this part, maybe, maybe a little lighter down there. Some reflective light, probably. So you generally start with the more of the midtones and then add the highlights and just shadows if you need them like a lot darker. Yeah, it's faster that way. I think, I think it's, that's really difficult for some people to imagine going that way, 
how did you how did you learn this this kind of step did you just like try it and it worked or uh, you mean starting with the mid tone yeah oh that's actually something uh, we do in traditional art classes mm -hmm. like for portraits sketches or life drawing oops <laughs> or life drawing <laughs> you didn't see that <laughs> So uh, yeah, we we'll usually use a tone paper, and then you can just quickly sketch down like the gestures or the pose of the model, and then you just shade it and highlight. Mm. So it's it's the same idea. Oh, okay. Mm. Do you have any favorite uh, references that you use for poses in particular? I mean, this is a portrait, so for it's a little poses, simpler. Poses. Uh, I I rarely use reference for poses I think I mostly just imagine them but if I imagine a pose and then I start drawing and I feel like I'm stuck like I don't I don't like this is not working then I might start looking for a reference that fits the one I'm imagining so I usually just go google <laughs> <laughs> I usually just google I, I don't know I, I don't have like a specific site that I can share with you guys do you just type in like the one a person one hand up in the air kind of sentence to find the, the pose <laughs> you're looking for <laughs> eh, i haven't done anything that specific <laughs> so it's more like uh more like me actually this can be kind of embarrassing never mind <laughs> <laughs> okay i keep think, your, keep I your think I've, I've searched i've searched some really weird keywords <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and now I'm gonna now I'm gonna do the background color, same idea. Selecting the background. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I'm like making weird noise when I draw. <laughs> It's a weird habit. You're probably not the only one doing that. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> good to know. Good to know. Wait. Oh, oh. oh also, I forgot like the, the, the most used shortcut I use for <laughs> making art. M for lasso tool. <laughs> lasso tool is MVP for me. Yeah. So M for lasso tool. And then when you're selecting stuff, hit shift to add to your selection and you hit alt to delete selection. So that's how I'm quickly fixing my selection. Wait, and then you can always come back in and fix the edges later on if you miss something. So it's okay. You're keeping it kind of loose. Especially like around this area with the hair strands. But right now it's okay, you can keep it loose. So now the time to apply the, the background color. Are you gonna do it on the same layer? Yeah, I usually do things on the <laughs> same layer. That's that's probably really scary for some people. Um, you um, if you do it now, you know you get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> so like for me it's more convenient to have all mm. the colors on the same layer. Because this mm. way I can fix things quickly. Say like, uh, hold on, I'll show you examples. Say like, I have right now like this, there's a gap, so I can just fix it. I just use this and go over it like this, using selecting the color, just fix it. If they're on different layers right now, I will have to like hop to this layer to fix this color and then hop to mm. that layer to fix that color. I have to do it separately. It just feels, it's a little more inconvenient to me. <laughs> <laughs> when everything that I'm saying layer, you can just do it quickly. Say so look right over here as well. So, and then, Oh, I think selected too quickly. Oh, oh, maybe I'll select a little more over here. You can add some 
silhouette of some foliage, maybe. Or I think I want to make this part darker. There are also times when you need to have everything on separate layers. That, that's like one of the thing I wanted to show you for as an example. I think if we have enough time after this, I will show you the example. <laughs> <laughs> we still we still have a bit of time. So let's okay. see how far we get. <laughs> okay. right. You talked about how you have like a ton of ideas. Do you ever feel like not drawing at all? <laughs> Actually, like the people who watch my stream often on Twitch, you, they they probably are like laughing at chat right now because oh you know, no, <laughs> I've been drawing too much, and every time they have to like who me off my stream, they have to kick me off my stream. They be like, go to rest. <laughs> <laughs> they like, you should sleep. <laughs> so I I like draw too much. I think. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, because we got the questions how you get past art block, and I wasn't quite sure. Uh, art block. Uh, actually, I haven't had art block. I haven't experienced art block yet, which is a good thing, I think. I usually yeah, have too many things I want to draw. Mm. I just don't have enough time for them. It'd be like, which one should I draw right now? But not really, like, I don't know what to draw. And like too much to do, too little time. Okay, so let me make this part darker. And now let me add some, add some uh, uh, firework. I was gonna say hanabi. <laughs> <laughs> so firework, quick firework, because it's a sketch, you can keep it sketchy, it's okay. Keep it loose. Da, 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 da. So like different color. So. And then that was like a very sharp pen tool. And then you could also go over it with soft airbrush if you want things to look a little more blowy. I'm just doing it very quickly, so it looks messy, but oh well. <laughs> over here, if you see anything you touch up, you can always go back and touch it up. And right now, I feel like the color might need some fixing. You can go over all the colors. You can either use, like, the layer correction layer to fix some to fix them a little bit, or you can just use the soft airbrush and turn it to overlay mode, blending mode. Let me show you an example. Maybe you can use this. You can make it a little bit more saturated looking if you that's the look you like. You can make it a little darker and more saturated, or you can just keep it the, the way it was. I can play around with these correction layers. It's really useful. Or like a tone curve, you can play around with a tone curve. So something like that, you can play around with that. Or you can use this very soft airbrush, I like this a lot. And then at overlay blending mode, you can, I like to add this soft glow effect using this brush. Just lightly go over the face. I feel like kind of like what makeup artists will say is lightly brush over your entire face. <laughs> doing her makeup. <laughs> We're doing her makeup. And then use a dark color, very dark blue for the shadow to enhance the shadow. So 
So you see the dark blue color can kind of enhance the shadow on the, on the yukata. I think that's, that's like a tool that a lot of people overlook is when you can actually set all the brushes to a blend mode and not just the layer. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> it's so helpful. <laughs> yes, definitely play around with your tools. You'll discover a lot of useful things. Yeah, so I think that's kind of... Oh, wait. This one. I'm using this concept brush. And then maybe do some decoration framing element here. Probably this color. You can see the sketch line showing up again, so I can go to the the mask and erase it. I think that's a little too light. Darken it a little bit. Usually start with a darker or medium color, same idea. Like kind of how I did, did the, the, the flower decoration here, here. Start with a medium to darker color and then you select the highlights. And you want to... So now a lighter color will just pop from the dark color. I think this lasso tool, uh, it's, it'll, you'll get better at it with practice. So don't worry if you don't get it at first. How long did it take you to discover your, the lasso tool as your favorite tool? <laughs> eh, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I think, wait. Mm, eh, I think I started. When did I start using this? I, <laughs> maybe, I think around, probably around 2019 when I started like sketching a lot because mm -hmm. I before 2000 like around 2018 I was mostly working on my comic so I was drawing comic pages a lot mm -hmm. and I didn't do a lot of colored art just just occasionally for like calendar or for like art prints when I prepare for anime expo <laughs> <laughs> yeah I show I only started doing a lot of sketches and coloring them like this quickly around 2019. Mm. So you're also you're also working with uh, like actual traditional watercolor, right? Uh, not as often, like only not as often. yeah, very occasionally because <laughs> <laughs> I I like it. Oh, I do it at Artists Alley's mm -hmm. for like on-site commission. Because it's oh, wow. easier, it's fa faster to use watercolor instead of like other stuff. Mm. And then I also sometimes do it to send gifts to my patrons on Patreon to paint little watercolor pictures for them. Otherwise, I, I just mostly use digital. H how would you rate the difference between traditional watercolor and uh, digital watercolor? Uh, digital watercolor is more convenient and, and faster, but what traditional is just, I don't know how to say it. It's, it's like stress relief. <laughs> it's very <laughs> soothing. It's like a soothing process to actually use traditional tools. But I don't know, they're both fun. So can't really compare. I like them both. So right now over here, this part is a little stiff looking, so I'll erase the sketch lines and then add some more hair using the pencil and maybe some lighter ones. 
kind of like the highlighted strands of hair. So that is like a quick example. Now I would have to to you add a layer of where is it here? <laughs> add a layer of texture to give it that watercolor paper look. So I always the end I'm gonna use material. Now over here I have a bunch of material that I like kind of collected from Club Studio Acid. You can kind of look and find the ones that you like them best. I like this one a lot, the texture watercolor paper. So just, wait, wrong file, never mind. <laughs> Drag it over here, still the wrong file, this one. Drag it over here. Make sure it's like above your layers. Don't put it on your layer, because if you put it on your layer, it's just gonna cover it up. Put it above and look at what it did. <laughs> Voila. So yeah, you, got, you might be like, what the heck? Panic, but don't worry, you can just change the blending mode. I usually use a soft light. And right now I still look too dark, right? You can go over here and change the color of your material. Over here, layer color. And then right now it's super blue. Change. I like something like that. Or maybe it looks too pale. You can just play around with the color until you find the result that you like. Let me darken a little more, a little more. Uh, maybe it's only like that I like. I'll just keep that. And over here, this blue box, you can change the size of the texture. Can you see that? You can make a really fine texture or you can enlarge the texture. I usually like it something like this. So it has like the watercolor paper look to it. And then over here, this part looks really sharp. It has that cell shading look, like I mentioned earlier. So I will usually soften the edge like this. Just kind of make it look like it's like bleeding out. Make it look a bit more natural. I did the, 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 the sky a little too rushed earlier otherwise i would have done this when i was coloring this guy yeah you should do this before you add the fireworks and stuff so yeah and then erase this extra lines at the edge and we don't need that anymore do something like that and then you can always add a bit of texture to this part because i feel like there's something look too sharp. We can fix the edges a little bit. Yeah, so something like that. When you when you're just sketching, like when do you know how to like when do you know you have to stop on the sketch or it becomes a full render? Do you sometimes uh, just keep going? <laughs> oh, the sketch. Mm, I don't really go too far with the sketch unless I'm doing an artwork that's mainly where the line is the focus of the art. Right now, if I know I'm gonna color it, the, the sketch will be very loose. I'm not gonna spend too much time on the sketch because all mm. the details can be done with the color. Unless, unless I'm doing, if I'm doing artwork that's like mostly the focus is on the line work of the art, then mm. I'll like spend a lot of time detailing the lines. But in that case, you don't have to spend as much, as much time with the coloring. You can just do some light washes. Mm. Kind of like this one where I spend more time on the hair. I drew all the lines down the hair. So this way, when I do color, the color is more simple. It's just like a light wash of color. And I didn't do as much like like selecting the shadow shape and stuff for that one. So it depends on how what you want in your art. Hmm. Do you want more about the line or do you want it to be more about the colors? Yeah. So I think this is it for the coloring. <laughs> I think we're done with that one. Oy. I think everyone's really impressed that that you did this like within less than an hour. Okay. So fast. <laughs> so fast. Actually, actually, I can go back and add some more fireworks. 
<laughs> so would you like to see the example that I was talking about when I use more layers? Yes, please, absolutely. Yeah. Like for like the the artwork I did for Anime Expo, you when you need something more clean where you have to have transparent background, then you're gonna use more layers, like one layer for all for the line work, and then layer for the color. Actually, I still keep all the color on the same layer, but you get what I mean. Wow. <laughs> like, more, like, like more layers. And then, or for example, when you have something, maybe you want to do a cover where the elements are going to be separate. So they can reuse the elements for different things. They're going to keep things on different layers. Mm. So this is when you're going to make good use of layers. Yeah. So this is, for this kind of work, you need to have clean line art and then color. Yeah. So that will be, so it depends on the purpose of the art. Mostly right now, what I do is just for like art prints or for like book covers. So I like to do it this way where everything is one layer. It's fine. You don't need to take it apart for different purposes. Yeah. <laughs> No, we still we still have like ten minutes. We what do, do we do? <laughs> <laughs> Oops, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, oh, there there are some more I questions, just... so we can, if you want to oh. go into more detailing with with a piece sure, you're working sure, on, sure. and then we'll look at a few more. Uh... Oh, I can I can show you some of my like the pieces I did during rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see? Actually? Oh yeah, yeah, yes, please. <laughs> Here. <sighs> Rehearsal. See? <laughs> Profile. I did that for rehearsal. So I was thinking I'll just do a profile, be faster. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's also like about around the same time, like 45 minutes. And then, oh, this one. I think I can quickly show an example of this. Like, like using soft airbrush, no line art needed. If you don't like line art. Anyone don't like line art? <laughs> I think there are a few people who don't like line art, so. <laughs> so you can, like, use your soft airbrush. This is more, very similar to traditional art. So if you're a traditional artist, you're, like, you can just go into your layer, put this down on your canvas, with a base color. I think traditional artists are definitely okay with this. So I'm just saying you don't have to be intimidated by digital art you can apply the same method of how you do things to digital art it might look creepy at first though <laughs> so you just kind of use one brush to draw the face This soft airbrush is really useful. So this is also kind of like sketching. If you're sketching the face. So yeah, I kind of did this for practice as well. And this one and this one. And I don't mind answering your questions while drawing. Oh question? yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I was just I was just mesmerized by how you're just starting with a new piece and I'm still trying to wrap my head around the other things. So <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So I was just I was just watching the stream as well. So <laughs> um do you have anything that any artwork, any artists, any works that inspire you in particular when you when you're drawing? uh inspire me too many <laughs> that's why i like i like browse twitter a lot like i follow a lot of artists on twitter so i like browse i just browse twitter daily and if you mean like all time inspiration this might sound kind of weird but i like leonardo da vinci a lot <laughs> yeah my all time inspiration it's kind of it's kind of weird. My friend joke about it, saying I'm like a Da Vinci fan girl. 
<laughs> that is very are... unexpected. Is this from your mm -hmm. traditional art experience? Mm, or did that come later? <laughs> maybe. I just, I, I don't like, I admire him a lot. I don't know. <laughs> like the way he works and like he sketches and he also mm. his paintings. Yeah. And then I also uh, really like Takeshi Obata, the, mm. the artist who makes who make, um, Death Note and Hikaru no Ko. I'm sure there are a lot of people in, in chat as well who look mm. up to them. Probably not Da Vinci fangirl, but. <laughs> There are probably some people who like Da Vinci too. Yay. I don't know if they are on, <laughs> on your level, but. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so this is like, you can use the soft airbrush to sketch and paint at the same time. So any other questions? Yeah, um, I, was just, I was just waiting <laughs> if you wanted oh, to okay. explain more. So, um, so you have, your style, the soft style you're using now and then the watercolor style you used before. Um, mm. Do you change your style overall a lot or you try to imitate other styles sometimes? Uh, or do you mostly go with coloring style? Um, drawing style. Drawing style, I think. Because uh, coloring style, you're already showing two different ones. <laughs> yeah, I do a lot of different coloring style actually. I like to experiment mm. different coloring style. But I think overall, my drawing style, like my how I draw my characters, mm. has, it's I don't really change mm. the way I draw my characters. Yeah. Um. There was a because there was also a question regarding because you you also um drawing comics. Mm. Um. How do you manage to get your characters to have a consistent look? Oh, I get that question a lot actually. <laughs> And I never knew how to explain it. Uh, I feel like I don't know how to answer this actually. Because my, ah, maybe because I have this thing about drawing the features, drawing unique features for my characters. Mm. If, you, if you saw my other webinar for Clip Studio Paint, I talked about, I talked about it a little bit, like how to keep unique features. So if you remember how each character is unique, then you'll be able to keep them consistent. Mm. But sometimes I forget as well. <laughs> so <laughs> you just have to draw often, I guess. Because mm. sometimes I'd be like, what was he there like? <laughs> yeah, it's my OC. <laughs> it's just kind of embarrassing. Do you like, keep character sheets? Oh, actually, Do you keep no. I, maybe I should though. <laughs> I, think I, should. I think I should. Yeah, but because your characters are so detailed, if you have like the the ornaments and stuff like that too, and then oh yeah, you, That's like with the details, yeah. you forget that someone was wearing something at a particular point in time, and then it's not in the next panel. Does oh. that ever happen to you? It happens sometimes. <laughs> like I think sometimes people catch how hey this person is wearing earring here and not wearing earring the next panel i was like oh thanks for catching that <laughs> I mean, thanks for catching that i forgot <laughs> yeah it happens sometimes <laughs> do, you, do you have your audience tell you that and then what do you do i mean if it's already published do you just well, fix it oh for my web comic yeah i'm kind of casual with my web comic <laughs> 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 they'll be like leaving the comments hey so that <laughs> Earring disappeared. Poof. <laughs> They'd be like, earring went poof. No, okay. <laughs> Magic earring. Yeah. Um, do, do you do both in your comic, the writing and the drawing? Yeah. I come up with a story and then I draw. Do you do like storyboards and all the, the steps as well? Like in before and then, or how, how does yeah, the process yeah. just yeah, yeah. I mean, work really quickly? I, I kind of type out like a very rough uh, script, mm -hmm. like not a detailed script. And then I sketch out thumbnails for each pages and just kind of work simultaneously, like editing the thumbnail and the scripts at the same time. Yeah, we learned that yesterday. That's actually how Japanese artists work too. 
Oh, really? That, <laughs> yes, because because in, J- in Japan, you have the nemu, mm. the, and that's apparently script and storyboard at the same time. Mm. That, was, that was one of the interesting points that we had yesterday as well. So mm. that's really cool. That's really mm. cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, just, just a real question going back to your setup. You're mm. using uh, a Wacom Cintiq. 16 mm-hmm. correct yes. Yes, yes and then laptop or desktop i mean you're streaming so you probably uh, have a yeah i have a desktop you use this okay all right okay i mean now you just finished like almost finished another drawing yes. within <laughs> the same hour and if you want another five minutes to finish that no. you can probably have that <laughs> no, it's okay. no it's okay it's okay <laughs> It's okay. What what are we supposed to do now? Are we are we ending this? It's okay. Jiron, what, what, <laughs> what should we do? What should we do? I just put this back here. Oh wait, what happened? Oh, oh no, what happened? <laughs> Your no, liner I, I, disappeared. It disappeared a sketch. Yeah. I deselected okay. the sketch. Okay. <laughs> All right. Are I you think... okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. I think I think we're at the end now. <laughs> no way. Hey. You can't hey. stop like that. I survived. <laughs> I survived. Go on. Go, go start, on. Start, start a new image. That's so good. Ah, oh, thank you. No, it was. Uh, it's sad that it's over already. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> do, do at least the highlight on the nose. Oh yeah. Just a little bit. Just just that tiny tiny bit of finish. And actually, I do use the tone scraping tool Ooh. a little bit for the eyelid. Thank you. Yeah, are we okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are we okay? okay? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was amazing. It was it was a pleasure <laughs> to watch and to listen to you both. Um, oh, lots you. of information. I think you answered a lot of questions that popped up here and there in the chat uh, already on the fly. So thank you so much for this session. Um, so let's... Ready to wrap it up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> so, exactly. Mm. So, most important, obviously, if you want to follow up uh, on Zelda's work, do follow her on social media. Um, if you want to share your art um, during the course of um, Wacom Manga and Anime Days, feel free to use the hashtag Wacom MAAD. So you can all connect uh, and continue the discussions on the various channels. Also, don't forget to check out uh, our U- EU and UK e-store offer with up to 20% discount with Manga20. Again, a huge thank-, thank you to Zelda and Joanna for this amazing session. That was it for day two of Wacom Manga Anime Days. We will be back tomorrow with Naoki Saito and Pixiv and a talk on artist careers with fan subscription services. We're looking forward to the third day and hope to see many of you again in the session tomorrow morning. Thank you for now and bye-bye.